Welcome to our History Forum. In this video, we'll be exploring a dark and often overlooked aspect of African history, the assassinations of African presidents. From Patrice Lumumba in the Democratic Republic of Congo to Thomas Sankara in Burkina Faso, we'll be examining the lives and legacies of these leaders, and the circumstances surrounding their untimely deaths. Some of the African leaders were chosen democratically. Others were elected to power in coups only to perish in other coups. Get ready to delve into the complex and often tumultuous world of African politics, as we uncover the stories of these courageous leaders who paid the ultimate price for their beliefs. Please don't forget to hit the bell to subscribe to my channel. Patrice Lumumba of Congo Born in 1925 Patrice Emery Lumumba was a radical anti-colonial leader who became the first Prime Minister of the newly independent Congo at the age of 35. Seven months into his term, on January 17, 1961, he was assassinated. Lumumba became an opponent of Belgian racism after being jailed in 1957 on trumped-up charges by the colonial authorities. He was of the view that Congo's vast mineral wealth should benefit the Congolese people rather than foreign corporate interests. In 1960, there were mass demands for democratic election. The Congolese national movement headed by Lumumba decisively won the Congo's first. He took office in June 1960. The beginning of his end started when the state of Katanga wanted to break away from the Congo. This secession movement was led by white-ruled colonial states of southern Africa. Lumumba opposition to this secession movement angered the Belgian colonial states and the white-ruled colonial states of southern Africa. Patrice Lumumba seeked for the help of the United Nations but they refused to aid him to stop the secession. So he went to the Soviet Union for help. After receiving aid from the Soviet Union which even proved futile, Lumumba was seized, tortured, and executed in a coup supported by the Belgian authorities. Patrice Lumumba was killed by firing squad on the 17th of January, 1961. This is a brief video of his capture by Congolese military authorities prior to his murder can be seen here. Patrice Lumumba securely wrote. And with him were men who served in his cabinet when he was prime minister. They were bundled in. Silvanus Epiphanio Olympio of Togo Silvanus Epiphanio Olympio was a Togolese politician who served as Prime Minister, and then President, of Togo from 1958 until his assassination in 1963. Silvanus Olympio was seen to be more dangerous than Seko Tour of Guinea. Immediately Togo gained independence. Their new President, Olympio told Agents France Press, AFP. He would do his best to ensure that Togo would thrive without France. In 1963, Olympio thought of creating Togolese currency, leaving the franc zone, CFA. This caught the attention of France as they believed Togo was becoming a model of emancipation for the other former French colonies. Olympio's own people wanted him gone as they saw him as nuisance. There were former soldiers of the French colonial army who were out of service and they demanded they be integrated into the Togolese army, which was about 1,000 men but Olympio refused because he didn't trust them. According to report, former master sergeant of the French colonial army, Emmanuel Budge led a commando of six men to attack the presidential residence at 11 p.m. There were only two policemen guarding the residence while Sylvanus Olympio and his wife, Dinah, were in bed. The attackers chatted among themselves for several minutes before breaking down the door. The president escaped through his window to the garden on barefoot before they could get glimpse of him. Fortunately, he got in a Buick which he found in the yard. The assailants went upstairs and shot at Dinah when they couldn't find Olympio. Seeking for refuge, Olympio drove to the American embassy, which was not protected by policemen. It was only one watchman who was protecting the embassy. Olympio, got killed at the embassy. Only handful of men knew what ensued before his death that night. According to the reports of Leon B. Pulada, who was the United States ambassador to Togo at the time, he arrived at the embassy and was immediately accosted by Putschists who threatened him. Pulada then entered the embassy and was beckoned over by Olympio. He narrated to him what happened. 
Pulada then told him not to get out of his car until he returned with the keys to the building. According to the account of Olympio's daughter, Sophia, then U.S. Ambassador Leon B., Pulada received a phone call at his residence, which was about two miles from his office. Sophia then said, Pulada did not open the building because he was afraid that the Putschists would ransack it. He returned to his residence immediately and called his French counterpart, Mazar, to confirm that Olympio was at home. Then Olympio did not move out of his car. A young American diplomat, Vice Consul Richard L. Storch, was living in a building just across the street from the embassy. At 6.40 a.m., Pulada called him and asked him to keep an eye on what was going on. Storch watched armed men come and go on the street. At 7.10 a.m., he saw a civilian in shorts and bare feet in the middle of the coup plotters. At 7.15 a.m., he went to the kitchen to make himself a coffee. That's when he heard three gunshots at regular intervals. His assassins had entered an embassy to catch him. Olympio was assassinated by the military led by Emmanuel Bergel, under direction of Sergeant Etienne Wadi Magnasingby. Juvenile Haber Ramana of Rwanda Juvenile Haber Ramana, the former president of Rwanda, was assassinated on April 6, 1994, when his airplane was shot down as it was preparing to land at Kigali International Airport. The assassination of Haber Ramana is considered to be a significant event in the Rwandan genocide, as it led to an escalation of violence and the widespread killing of Tutsi and moderate Hutu people. The details are still unclear, and there are opposing theories as to who was responsible. There was a long-time feud between the Hutus and the Tutsi. The Tutsi were generally favored by the colonial authorities, who saw them as being more civilized and better suited to serve as intermediaries between the colonizers and the native population. This led to tension and conflict between the Tutsi and Hutu, which continued after Rwanda gained independence in 1962. The Hutus rose against the Tutsis in the 1960s which forced more than half of the small population of the Tutsi people to seek refuge outside the country. In 1990, the Rwandan Patriotic Front, made up of Tutsi exiles who fled Rwanda after being persecuted by the Hutus, entered Rwanda to rebel against the government. There was political instability so the president of Rwanda, Juvenal Haber Ramana decided to cease fire with the RPF. The Rwandan Patriotic Front wanted power, so the president reached a peace agreement with a rebel group for power-sharing arrangements. The president was a Hutu so this aggravated the Hutu people in the country. Some believe that the Rwandan Patriotic Front, a Tutsi-led rebel group, was responsible for the assassination, while others believe that influential people within the Rwandan government or military were behind the attack. The assassination remains a source of controversy and is still the subject of ongoing investigations and legal proceedings. Julius Nyerere of Tanzania Another African president who was assassinated while in office was Julius Nyerere, the first president of Tanzania. Nyerere was a highly respected and influential figure on the African continent, and he played a key role in the independence movements of many African countries. As president of Tanzania, Nyerere implemented a number of progressive policies, including free education and healthcare, land reform, and the promotion of women's rights. However, his efforts to build a socialist economy in the country faced significant challenges, and by the time of his death in 1999, Tanzania was facing significant economic difficulties. Nyerere's assassination, while not as well known as some of the other cases on this list, had a significant impact on the political and economic trajectory of Tanzania. Thomas Sankara of Burkina Faso Thomas Sankara was a Marxist revolutionary and president of Burkina Faso from 1983 to 1987. He is often referred to as Africa's Che Guevara, because of his charismatic leadership and revolutionary policies, which included nationalizing Burkina Faso's mineral and land resources, investing in education and healthcare, and promoting self-sufficiency. He was killed by Blaise Compaor, assisted by their colonial master, France. He was seen as a threat by the French government because he truly wanted his country to improve. He wanted everything to be made in Burkina Faso including cars, clothes, and other multiple goods and services. 
Thomas Sankara didn't live a lavish lifestyle like most contemporary African leaders. He chose to live in a modest home and drove a Renault 5, a small and inexpensive car, rather than waste the country's money to buy expensive cars while his people were impoverished. Thomas Sankara was fighting to cut ties with their colonial master, France but he got killed by his close friend Blaise Compaor before realizing this goal. One of Sankara's primary goals before his assassination was to combat corruption and mismanagement within the government. He implemented a number of reforms designed to increase transparency and accountability, such as establishing a court to investigate corruption and issuing a decree that required all government officials to declare their assets. Sankara also sought to reduce the influence of traditional leaders and instead empower the people to participate in the political process. He believed that this would help to create a more just and equal society. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll get notified every time I post a new video. Hit the subscribe button now so you don't miss any of my future videos.